Hello, party people, and welcome to Office Hours. The, yes, this is my office for today. Of course, one of the nice things about working from home is that you can work from anywhere you want to. Usually this microphone would be clipped onto my shirt, but I don't have a shirt. Also, why that's why I'm sitting in the middle of the hot tub to keep this vaguely safe for work to make sure I don't get banned from TikTok or whatever. So let's uh, go through the top voted questions that y'all had from PollGab. So the number one question you had from Mooney Flyer says, Hey Brent, what are your thoughts on functions like pivot and windowing functions? I haven't heard much from you on these. Yeah, because generally speaking, I don't generally teach you how to write new queries. I teach you how to tune existing queries that you already have. So for writing new queries, the books that I always send everybody to are Itzik Ben Gan's books. Check those out and they'll teach you uh, all about how to do windowing functions. Next up, let's see here. Get this situated just right on my phone so I don't have to keep scrolling back and forth. Ickle Mouse asks, Hi Brent Obi-Wan. <laughs> says, I know this isn't your area, but when do you see policy-based management in use? For me, never. Uh, when the feature came out, it had a lot of potential, but one of the things that I tell y'all a lot is that wait until the next version ships and see if Microsoft improved it or if they just checked a box and walked away so that for the rest of their lives they can say, we can have, po we have policy-based management. You know, they, they think they've checked the box and it's done. The feature never got any improvement. It doesn't do all kinds of things. For example, the most obvious thing that you would want with policy-based management is say, every database should be backed up within at most X minutes. You know, you'd set a policy for backups and the feature doesn't even do that. They never worked to improve it, so it just kind of died on the vine. Happens a lot with features, they just uh, die on the vine. Uh, next up, Dwin says, I love this office hours thing. Woohoo! Well, he probably said that right up until this one. So two years out from the release of SQL Server 2022, I haven't heard anything about the release of the next version. Did I miss something? Nope. Microsoft is still trying to fix the problems with SQL Server 2022. They haven't even shipped the feature, uh, the premier flagship feature yet, the ability to fail over back and forth to Azure managed instances. So until they can finish 2022, it's kind of hard for them to talk about vNext. Next up, Hold My Beer asks, when do you change the database page verify options? No, he says, when you do change the page verify options, do you need to rebuild your heaps and your clustered indexes? Yes, but so the thing was with page verification options, that came out like 19 years ago. It came back and it came out like 2005. I think we got the ability to do checksums. So you don't hear a lot about uh, people talking about how you fix problems that were configured wrong 19 years ago. Technically, yes, you have to rebuild your heaps and clustered indexes, uh, all every index that you've got. Uh, I immediately want to go into a diatribe about how you rebuild indexes. But the short answer to the question is yes, you would have to do that. The other thing I'd say is if somebody had that setting wrong as of like for the last 19 years, that's probably the least of your problems. Next up, Straight Banana says, what is your keyboard typing speed? Have you ever worked to improve that efficiency? Um, when I was in high school, like I learned to, to type with two fingers, the hunt and, pet th hunt and peck thing. And uh, when I was in high school, I took a touch typing class. I switched over to touch typing and I've never worked on it since. It's just not one of those things that I've had to consciously practice. Because I just kind of do it well enough that it gets the job done and I'm kind of happy with it. The bigger problem I have is my thinking speed. Next up, Paul says, what are your pros and cons of storing XML in SQL Server as different data types? Well, so for me, the big thing that I have is as soon as you start getting to mentioning the pros and cons of using it, it's kind of like saying, give me the pros and cons of running with scissors. What kinds of scissors are the best ones to run with? Yo, dog, don't run with scissors. 
When you have XML files, there's a place that you store them. It's called a file server. There you go. Next up, my T got cold says, has experience shown that it is important to set the trace flags that query store take, talk, uh, cares about? Everyone links me to the Aaron Stilato uh, article. So my, my thing is, is go watch Aaron Stilato's training courses and do what she says. She works for Microsoft now. She's also really smart and diligent. And if anyone was going to come back and say, yo, it turns out that thing I told you to do, it's not actually very important. Aaron would be the first person to tell you, do what Aaron says. Uh, next up, Jonas asks, I love how passionate and knowledgeable you are as an expert in your field. What tips or advice would you give someone trying to figure out their specialty? Oh, if you go uh, uh, Google or hit YouTube search for Brent Ozar, 500 level career guide, and uh, I've got a whole like three hour long video talking about how to do just that. Next up, Demetra says, what bad things can happen if SQL Server's max memory setting is left unconfigured? If it's left unconfigured, the default is unlimited, so SQL Server will try to use every last bit of memory available to the box. Then, whenever anybody uses anything for memory, like they remote desktop in and they launch SSMS, don't lie, I've seen you do it. When you do that, it desperately puts SQL Server under memory pressure to quickly release as much as it can to accommodate your needs. And SQL Server can drop things out of memory that you really wish it wouldn't drop, like execution plans. And we'll do one more. Let's see here. Um, Tom says, hi, Brent. A table has 30 indexes plus and uh, sorted indexes result. Da, 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 da. Adding an index hint doesn't take care of this. Is this type of situation covered in mastering query tuning? So as soon as I hear 30 indexes on a table, I immediately get kind of suspicious. It's not that you never can. There are absolutely situations where you can and should but we cover those in mastering index tuning and then into more depth in mastering query tuning. So go check out those training classes. Now, I would actually go longer, but the thing is, is Eve left this hot tub on 105 degrees and it is hot as all get out out here. You're starting to see sweat coming down from me. And I'm like, this isn't comfortable, so I'm going to call it quits here, which is probably also why we typically do hot tubbing in the afternoons in the shade rather than when I've got this direct sun on me. But hopefully y'all enjoyed it and I will see y'all on the next Office Hours. Adios.